Hey, greetings, family. Pastor Jamal here, Rising Ground Church. Um, so we had a question, or I had a question from a viewer yesterday about the video that I posted on um, law. God is both law and love and, and what that looks like in this particular sense. I know I said that I, I did um, previous videos on that, but yesterday the Spirit gave me a different spin on it and, and I shared it. And a, que uh, a viewer had a question and their question was, please tell me which laws or principles can be used for financial breakthrough. Please tell me which laws or principles can be used for financial breakthrough. Now I know that's a lot of people's question. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. A lot of people's questions. So um, let's get right into it. I have to first... Um, when I say context in this sense, I have to, because the video yesterday, um, I said that regardless of the law or principle, which is perpetual, it's constant, it's ongoing, and you don't have to be a believer to use it. But for the believer, God still requires his children, the believer, to commune or connect or consult him even when... Um, you're using his law. Uh, and I said, again, the video talked about we had a time where we were really seeking God. And this was some years and years ago. We were really seeking God and, and man, God wouldn't answer. And, you know, we had those moments where, where God is silent. So God was silent for a period of time. And it was really, we were, we were really going through. So it was a really hard time for us. And then, um, as we came out of it, I, I said I was going to work and then then God spoke and said, I'm both law and love. And he gave me the, the, the understanding of what he was saying, but it was really layered and it, he gave me even a deeper revelation as, as the years went, went, went on. And this particular revelation that I got yesterday on this same thing was, um, you know, was really pertinent, but just really knowing that for the believer, even though the unbeliever can use the law of God and it works for the believer, God still requires, um, you, you know, a, a, a consultation per se. So this is so so, so I'm going to read John 15 verses seven. And this is a condition and a result of that verse. So watch to say that verse is is talking about a condition and a, re and a result. So, John 15, verses 7 says, um, it says, But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. And verse 8 says, I want to read this, verse 8, verse, eight, verse 8 says, When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. And this brings God great glory. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciple. And this brings God much glory. So the condition is this. You have to remain in Christ as he remains in you in order to ask and the thing be granted. Or in other words, in order to use God's law, you have to remain in Christ as he remains in you. So the condition is a characteristic. The condition is a, is a lifestyle or a beingness as it relates to, um, you know, being like Christ or, or you know, being uh, connected in God in, the, in, in this way that, um, God desires in order for these types of situations to work. So she says, or the person says again, well, what are the laws or, or principles uh, that I can use to get a financial breakthrough? So I'm just going to run down a couple of them or five of them or so. So of course we have prayer. Prayer is a law. Remember prayer produces or it should produce a result. Sowing or the law of exchange. 
You know, we sow, we give, um, we exchange. We ex sometimes we exchange money. Sometimes we exchange time um, in, in order to exchange something else. What does the Bible say? Beauty for ashes, joy for mourning. There is an exchange that is a law that should produce a result. De uh, declaring, we declare. The Bible says, um, you know, um, you can pray and you can decree. You can declare. So you literally can announce, declare a thing in the character and nature of God, of course, or in God's um, his permission, per se. It's not per se, but uh, and you should get a result. Decreeing, decreeing with imagination. I like saying it that way. Decreeing with imagination. You're making an announcement. You're, you're setting, you're slamming the gavel down, but you're doing it with your imagination. What does that mean? It means you have a mental picture of what it is you desire from God, what it is you desire to be with God, um, in God, or just, and it's not so religious, but I'm just saying it that way what you desire to be, what you desire to have, how you want your life to look, how you want this particular moment or the outcome to be. You, you have a mental picture of it and um, you, you start decreeing um, with the, the image that you really, that you want to have or that you want to, to be. A lot of times we'll have a mental picture and we'll think of, man, it'll be so nice to um, have that car, it'd be sure nice to uh, to marry that lady or marry that man, or it'd be sure. And you are you are picturing something that you're not putting yourself in. So you you have to actually live, kind of live. A lot of people say it in the world. They'll say you're living the wish fulfilled, or you're assuming the wish fulfilled. Um, and again, don't get caught up in the terms. Remember, everything comes from God. Is just what have we done with, with, with these things that have made God frown, per se? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop saying per se. I don't know what to do. Anyway, so decreeing with imagination and praise. So, so we know, you know, this, this used to bother me because I would always hear Christians that were very immature talk about, man, when the praises go up, the blessings go, you know, they come down and they literally have experienced, they've experienced the fruit of that activity. They, they've experienced praise and worship and, you know, and, and all of these things. And literally the atmosphere was set or the atmosphere changed and something happened. Now, the, the, the gray area or the real place you got to be careful with, you know, as you're growing in God, as you are a babe in Christ, he will allow you to experience um, these kind of things without necessarily being mature or being really connected because God wants you to know that he's real and he'll do things for the baby that allows the baby to know that he's real. But then there comes a time when you're, when you're no longer a baby or he's saying, Oh, it's time for training. Well, you'll do the same things pretty much with no understanding and you won't get anything. And then you'll be walking around here like, what's going on? I'm praying, I'm praising and nothing is happening. Um, what's happening, God. And remember this, this happens more for the believer again, because again, I got to keep reiterating it. Those who are not believers can operate the principles or work them and get results as well. But you have to deal with what that means for your life eventually. So what's behind these activities or what are they carrying? What's behind the activities of prayer, sowing or the law of exchange, uh, declaring, decreeing with imagination or praise. What's behind these activities or what are these activities carrying that make them valuable or, or that make them work? And the, I keep looking over here. And the, and the truth is they are carrying spirit and truth. What makes them work, because the Bible says, you, you, you know, you got to worship God in spirit and in truth. So God is telling us, Worshiping him in spirit and in truth is what makes the connection in all levels and in all forms. It's, a, it's a, another way of saying you completely trust God and depend on God. And what it is, 
is spirit and truth. They are riding the wave of energy. They are why the spirit and truth are riding on the wave of energy. Energy is carrying spirit and truth with you, with these activities um, to God per se. <laughs> anyway, to God that moves God. Now you somebody might say energy. Oh no, what's going on? Here we go again. Energy. It's simple. Don't complicate it. Energy is the force that moves stuff. Uh, uh, that's kind of elementary way of saying it. So when we say praise, praise is not just words that we say that are pretty and that, that fluff God's shoulders, you know, that make God, you know. No, it's the energy carrying the spirit and truth the nature and character and wisdom and the ways and the understanding of God that makes the words produce a result. Praise is energy. David, David would dance and, and sing and do these things. These are, these are, 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 are things in motion. It's energy in motion. Um, it's movement. It's, it's the movement that sets the frequency per se. I'm, I'm, I forget it, y'all. I'm saying it per se. <laughs> it's the energy that that makes the movement, or it 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 it, let, it allows the words, and it allows what the words carry, the spirit and truth, to produce a result. So when you say, "What can I do to get a financial breakthrough?" First, you got to understand this. If you are a believer, then um, you are being trained. You are being transformed. You, if, you are, if you are a true believer and you're allowing God to do God's work in you, this is what's happening. And, that, and by you agreeing to that training and that transforming, then um, you're saying this method of training or transforming that God is using, I, I, have, to, I have to just um, align with it. You know, whatever that means. If that means you attempt to use the law, and you don't get a result or you don't get an answer, it's because something else is happening. So God wants you to come into a, a, a wisdom in that moment, in that stage, that's telling you, okay, there's a good chance that you're trying to operate these laws out of fear, worry, and doubt. Anytime fear, worry, and doubt or limitations are attached to anything that we try to use in the spirit or in the nature, in the character, or in the ways of God, then we know there's not God and, and God doesn't respond to it. Um, especially as... He's training us and as, as we're really growing. Um, so it's just really key to know that you got to investigate yourself and you got to ask, why first, why am I trying to do this? What do I want? Well, we know what you want, but, but why, why are you doing it? Why do you want it? Are you afraid you're going to get kicked out of your house? Are you afraid that you're going to lose your job? Are you afraid your marriage is going to end? Are you afraid that you'll never be married? Whatever it is, that you are deciding to use God's principles and laws for as the believer, you got to rem remember that first. You got to remember that you got to look like God a little more in order to use God's strategies and God's methods, because we don't know truly why God outside of being trained, but we don't know why God decides to really allow you to use his laws and principles as the believer in this moment that you need breakthrough in. And we don't know why that he doesn't, you know, we can assume that it's always, it always has to do with our growing, which I, which I believe, but God is wise beyond God is God. God is wisdom. So you gotta, you gotta know that. So I hope it made sense people. So get in line with the nature of God, let God, let Christ be in you and you be in him. And whatever you ask in the, in the, in the exercise of law and um, principle, then God will see that it happens. Hope it made sense, people. Pastor Jamal Rising Ground Church, I'll talk to you. Peace.